Hi there. Uh, in this video, we're going to be continuing to go through some failing unit tests. Um, I actually, ahead of time, found a failing unit test um, to just to save us doing a search at the beginning of the video, but I've not really started to dive into why this is failing. Um, so yeah, let's just run it again and, and then we can dig in and see what's going on. And what we get is this, so we have an assertion error um, that these are not equal. Um, and we're not really sure why, so I've just pulled up the docs for this function and we're now gonna look at that a bit. Um, yeah, so, so what are we doing? So we can see that we're returning an eigen decomposition of a symmetric matrix where they're orthogonal. Uh, okay. Uh, right, okay, so, so, so I guess we are generating symmetric matrices, um, so yeah, I mean, this is X, X comes from data type X, which comes from here, get data type matrix, and is this being generated symmetrically? We have a data type of random size. No, and then we just generate array and values. So, okay, that is the first problem. This is not being generated as a symmetric matrix. So, um, I'm gonna assume that that is the problem. Um, let's see if we have a function for symmetric. Uh, Mm. No, no, no. Okay, so not really. Um, Yeah, I think I think the best way to generate a symmetric matrix is, is not to do stuff like this. Uh, this could work, but um, yeah, but 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 I I think we can just generate it symmetrically. That's uh, a bit simpler, I would say. Uh, well, I'm not a bit simpler, but I think it's a bit cleaner. It kind of makes the independent um, variables that we're generating with hypothesis uh, kind of more clear. Um, so yeah, so, so let's implement this. So get data type matrix. Maybe what we can do is just have a new argument, which let's make a keyword only, which is just symmetric equals false by default. And we end up doing something quite different if it is symmetric. Um, so let's just like have if symmetric, we do something else and otherwise we do this. So, uh, so yeah, debt, and I, I don't know about debt, what's needed here. Uh, no, that isn't needing to be symmetric, but this is. So let's then say symmetric equals true. Okay, so that's the first thing. So now we need to implement this. Uh, so how, okay, so the first question is how many independent variables are there for a symmetric matrix? Um, well, uh, it's going to be the, the area divided by 2 plus the, the, the dimension over 2, I think. So if we imagine like 5 by 5, um, the area is going to be everything in the upper quadrant, the, the kind of one of these two quadrants plus half of the di half of the elements on the diagonal. So I think the equation is gonna be like, so, so yeah, let me just think this through. So independent, um, as an output num independent vowels equals, so we have this random size. So it's gonna be this. Um, I mean, squared uh, over two 
it might be an easier way, but I think something like this over two. Um, so this is, and then it's going to be like plus random size of two or something like this. Uh, and this should always be an integer, I believe. Probably there's an easy way of writing this equation, and maybe I'm wrong, so let's see, but I think that's right. Um, yeah, I think that's right. So, so this is the number of independent uh, values in the symmetric matrix. Um, right, so now we need to generate them. So what we're doing is this array values, right? So, so let's first generate the array values. Um, so let's make it flat. So, um, yeah. Fine, so we can draw them as well. So, uh, fine, yeah, so min val, max val. So, we're creating kind of relatively sensible uh, values in the matrices uh, array vals. Flat, right? Uh, well, this should not be outside the if statement, really. I don't know what the lint is going to say here, but yeah, let's do it like this. Um, maybe something like this. Um, whatever, that'll do for now. Uh, okay, so, um, and this is going to be the list, uh, it's, it's going to be the kind of list of lists, um, yeah, um, so what I would then say we need to do is, um, I'm actually going to step in here, I just want to kind of actually take a look at it. Uh, so we should be coming in here now because of this. <coughs> so <coughs> yeah, so um, so now we've got the batch shape. Um, basically what we need to do now is, is go through, um, and this is where it's a bit annoying because, <clears throat> um, we kind of just need to go like for, um, cause we need to do it for every element in the bat shape, basically. So, so iterating through all of these with an arbitrary bat shape is, is a bit annoying and in general what we need to do is kind of do something like for i in random size um, for j in range random size uh, and then um, so let's imagine we're starting in the top left so we're only going to fill in values um, we only need to do this action um, for every, um, so actually what I'm going to do is create a new composite function um, because I think this would be better um, to do actually, um, yeah, so I'm just thinking out loud a bit here, what, what the cleanest way of doing this is. So what was your batch shape in this case? Yeah, just one. Um, and what's the random size? Yeah, two, yeah, it makes sense. Um, so what we need to do is then we do something like um, if um, j is less than i, then we can just like continue. Um, otherwise, what we're doing is we're gonna 
kind of pop this. So, I mean, it would end up, if this was an array, and actually this is what, why I'm thinking maybe let's just create this into array for now. That's actually fine, I think. Um, let's make this a NumPy array, and let's just be able to do this kind of indexing logic that's really gonna help us here. Um, so I, um, array of ours flat, and then let's, so then what we can do is um, array vowels equals numpy times zeros that shape plus uh, I don't know what format the bat shape is actually. Yeah, I, yeah it's a tuple, so, so this addition should be fine. Um, bat shape plus random size, random size. Yeah, so now when we've got our like actual array initialized. So then what we're gonna do is ij equals array vals flat um, and then the equation here is going to be Let's just do a counter. Um, let's make it C. So something like this. Um, so um, so at the beginning, these are both zero, so this means that zero, zero is equal to this. Um, and then let's just do something like if um, i is not equal to j. I mean, to be honest, we could do it anyway. Um, it's actually not a harm. It's probably just a bit easy to read. We just kind of alternate them every time. Um, but we, we, we make sure to not um, we make sure to not go through the whole grid so that the C is actually counted up correctly. But when we do go through these, we're going to flip them as well. Um, yeah, something like this. Uh, I think that might even be it. So then let's say uh, we go through all of the J's. Um, J is not less than I on any of these. So let's say it's five by five. We do all the first five, which is like, let's say the very top line. Then on the next one, uh, i is one. So we skip j being zero. Um, but then we we have it um, on the next one and, and kind of so on. Um, and I think that works. Uh, let's give it a try. If not, then hopefully the bug can kind of correct us on where we've made a mistake. Uh, the other thing is that in general, this should actually not be turning a NumPy array. Uh, it, it by default returns a list, so uh, we should be returning this input data type. And what we should also be doing is returning this, but like a to list. And let's see what's going on here. Let's see if we can get to this breakpoint without throwing an error. Here we can, so maybe, maybe we've miraculously got it right first try. Uh, okay, that's, did we generate two 3.3s? Is that true? We did, okay, so, well that example worked. That's good. Um, yeah, okay. Right, well, let's actually Try it in the full swing of things. Um, I don't remember where it is. Let's just run it here. I don't think there's any debug code left, like try except that would 
Okay, it passed. So I'm going to be optimistic and, uh, and assume that that solved the problem because I'm pretty sure that was failing before. So let's let's take a look. Um, oh, another thing we should probably do is like assert that the matrices are in fact symmetric um, during the function call. Um, I'll make a note of that. This video is already getting relatively long. Um, that's something we can add in future and it's not, not necessary to get the test passing. So we should keep the video focused as well, I would say. Um, so yeah, let's add this. Let's add this. Great. Okay. So uh, extended uh, helper to enable the generation of symmetric matrices and used this to get uh, a test this passing. Oh, I just realized I don't have my key tracker at the top. My apologies for that. Uh, okay, so we had some lint mistakes. So let's just let pre-commit fix those for us. And let's get that pushed. Awesome, okay, well that's a relatively good length, 15, 16 minutes or so, not too bad. Um, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.